ask you if you would please to stand for a moment and take your Bibles and turn with me to the New Testament, to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 is where we're going to look today. And while you're turning, I would... Uh, just like to take a moment to remind you that today is a really special day on the church calendar. Today is, is Pentecost Sunday. Today is the day that we remember the coming, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon this earth in a manner that had never been experienced before. The first Pentecost was actually experienced the day that the law, the word of the Lord was given from Mount Sinai. That was the first Pentecost. And Pentecost is always rooted and grounded in the word. That's right. That's right. We, we get this idea sometimes that Pentecost has to do with just a, you know, an emotional reaction. And, and it can be emotional. How many of you are glad for some emotion some of you could use a little more emotion. Just saying, you know. But it's always rooted and grounded in the Word. And it is that outpouring of God's Word upon us. And then the Word becomes flesh. And then the Word becomes spirit activated within us at Pentecost. It's always based in the Word. So today we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, but I want you to know that the coming of the Holy Spirit was not a one-time event That's that right. we just look back on and commemorate and celebrate and say, thank God that we had Pentecost and now we can move on with our lives. No, Pentecost is a daily expression and work in the life of the believer. So I want to talk to you about that a little bit today. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, we'll begin at verse 1. We'll just read the first four verses. And that'll kind of get us a jumping off place for the message today. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Let's read it together, shall we? When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled. Say that again. And they were all filled. Say it one more time. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Lord, Thank you for our time together. Now open our hearts to hear and receive the word. Let faith rise in our hearts now as we experience this time of sharing together in the preaching of your word. Oh God, give us ears to hear what the Spirit will say. And give us the courage to respond in obedience to the work of the Holy Spirit. And I lift up other life-giving churches in this city. I pray blessing upon them. I pray for our loved ones not walking in right relationship with you. I draw them to a place of repentance, I pray. And I pray, O oh Lord, for our country. Our hearts again this week have been broken as we've learned of the shooting in Texas in the school. Comfort those people, Lord. Somehow turn things around in our nation. And turn things around in our own city, I pray, so that we are able to hear from you once again. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will challenge us and that you will raise up in this city a, a, a fresh work of the Spirit. That violence will be diminished and evil will be pushed back and Jesus and his righteousness will be lifted up. I pray for that in the strong, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated in His presence. 
Perhaps the most distinctive <clears throat> and at the same time most controversial expression of being filled with the Holy Spirit is the manifestation known as speaking in tongues, spiritual language, an ability to speak a language the person speaking has never studied, learned, and often has never even heard before. This single identifying mark of spiritual fullness has been the subject of discussion and the center of controversy for generations. There are some who view speaking in tongues as the ultimate spiritual experience, even though the Bible never claims that to be true. <clears throat> On the opposite side of the issue are those who teach that speaking in tongues is no longer available to the modern believer. They can't discount the fact that they see it in the scriptures, but they say, no, that's over and done with. They claim that all the gifts ceased with the death of the last of the New Testament apostles. They would further assert that a person who speaks in tongues today is either demon-possessed or mentally ill. <clears throat> there are some people who want to parade the ability to speak in tongues in the public arena as if it is some kind of merit badge or proof of spirituality. Others strictly limit the expression to the privacy of their personal prayer closet. Some have become very dogmatic in their approach by insisting that if someone doesn't speak in tongues, then that person doesn't have the Spirit indwelling their life. Others may concede that it is possible to speak in tongues, perhaps, but they don't feel it's very profitable or necessary or even desirable for the modern believer. Now, the concern I bring to this pulpit today is for those who have relegated the spirit manifestation of speaking in tongues to the category of optional. I want to challenge that thinking in this message. And I want to talk to you today about the importance of speaking in tongues. I want to suggest to you that the manifestation of speaking in tongues should be desired, it should be sought, it should be expected, it should be experienced, it should be received, and it should be practiced as a normal part of the Spirit-controlled life. When I talk about the importance of speaking in tongues, the first thing I want you to see <clears throat> is the promise of spiritual language. As you spend time in the New Testament, you discover that the Bible is very clear that being filled with the Spirit is both desirable and necessary. Paul writes to the Ephesians and says, Do not be drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. The Bible is also clear that when a person is filled with the Spirit, the normative expectation is that the Holy Spirit will express His presence in their life by enabling that person to speak in tongues. This gift isn't something strange or unusual according to the Bible. Rather, the unnatural part, according to the Bible, is if someone filled with the Spirit doesn't speak in tongues. Being filled with the Spirit isn't something to be feared or to be shunned. Instead, being filled is part of the birthright of every believer. <clears throat> this was the message when the prophet said in Isaiah 28 and 11, Indeed, he will speak to this people through stammering lips and a foreign tongue. 
It was none other than the Lord Jesus himself who prophesied and gave the promise of speaking in tongues. He introduced the idea of spiritual language when he said in Mark 16, 17, These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. The Holy Spirit, with the accompanying expression of spiritual language, was sent by the Father. That's the meaning of John 14 and 16, where Jesus says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That's the meaning of Luke eleven thirteen, 13, where Jesus says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The promise was then fulfilled on the day of Pentecost that we were reading about just a moment ago in our text. Jesus promised it. The Father sent it. Then we see that the church expected and experienced it. Isn't it interesting that the church began speaking with, with tongues the same day it came into being? The same day the church was called and formed into being is the day that they began speaking with tongues. Speaking in tongues wasn't an embarrassing surprise to the Almighty. It wasn't something some committee created so they could separate the church from all the other religious expressions. The supernatural gift of language was given for holy and wholesome purposes. The bringing together of people from all over the known world with many different languages and dialects and giving them the language of the Spirit as a common language to speak was actually a reversal of the curse that occurred at the Tower of Babel where God confused their languages. What I'm trying to tell you is that tongues, spiritual language, is God's idea. Jesus instructed his followers in Acts chapter 1 to return to the city of Jerusalem and wait until they had received the promise of the Holy Spirit. In obedience to his word, they went to the upper room and there they waited. They weren't told how long to wait. They weren't given an agenda to follow while they waited. They were just told to wait until... And let me just pause for just a moment in the message long enough to tell you that waiting on God is never meaningless, nor is it ever wasted time. When it comes to receiving the things of God, too many times we're in too big of a hurry. See, we live in a culture that doesn't understand the value of waiting. We live for the immediate. Everything is instant. Everything is microwavable. In the church, we've forgotten that God isn't a computer operator. God is a farmer. He works in seasons. There is seed time and harvest. There's a rhythm to the way things work and to the way God operates. I want to tell you, I, I just believe I'm talking to some people right now that have had a blessing laid out for you by God, but you missed the blessing because you were so impatient, you just ran right by it. These 120 followers of Jesus were in the upper room and they waited. For 10 days they waited. They waited, the Bible says, until the day of Pentecost had fully come. The Bible says they were waiting, just waiting, when suddenly everything about that day changed suddenly. Just when they were beginning to lose heart, suddenly. Just when they were beginning to lose hope, suddenly. I, that's just like God. Just about the time you think you've settled down and the way it is, is the way it's always going to be, suddenly. Just when you're convinced nothing's going to change, suddenly. Just when you've run out of options, suddenly. Just when you've run out of resources, suddenly. God never moves according to your timetable, but He's always on time. It never works according to your agenda, but he always does what is best. With him, it's always when the day has fully come. With him, it's always in the fullness of time. See, you thought it should have happened a month ago, but suddenly. You thought it was going to be last week, but suddenly. 
You thought he'd forgotten all about you until suddenly. You thought he'd abandoned you until suddenly. You thought it was time to give up, but suddenly I came to this pulpit to remind somebody that's going to have ears to hear something more than just a preacher preaching right now, but you'll have ears to hear what the Spirit is trying to say to you. I want to tell you it's too soon for you to give up because God has a suddenly with your name on it. Yes, He does. When they were least expecting it, there suddenly came a sound from heaven like a violent rushing wind that filled the house. Tongues of fire appeared over the heads of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. The early church experienced the infilling of the Spirit and the manifestation of spiritual language at its birth. Not only that, but the early church expected it to be the normal event for the church. In Acts chapter 8, a deacon by the name of Philip went to the city of Samaria and preached the good news of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that there were signs and wonders performed through his ministry. People were healed. People were delivered from demons. So great was the move of God that the entire city came to faith in Jesus and the people were baptized as believers. The very next thing we see is Philip sending word to Peter and John who were still in Jerusalem to come and join him in this ministry. The Bible tells us the reason they came to Samaria was because these new converts had been baptized but they had not yet been filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 17 of Acts chapter 8 tells us that Peter and John began laying their hands on them and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. It was the expectation of the church that believers would be baptized with the Holy Spirit after they were converted. That's why the Apostle Paul came to the city of Ephesus in Acts chapter 19. And when he found 12 men who were disciples of, disciples of John the baptizer, he asked them whether or not they had received the Holy Spirit. They responded that they had been baptized in water for repentance but had never heard of the Holy Spirit. Paul laid hands on them and verse 6 says the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. See what I'm preaching to you today isn't something a group of people who call themselves Pentecostals invented around the turn of the 20th century that would set them apart from all the other Christian groups. But this is something that the Bible sets out as a normal and natural pattern for everyone who would be a follower of Jesus. It is the birthright blessing of everyone who has repented of sin and surrendered his or her life to Jesus. Being baptized with the Spirit, with the accompanying evidence and expression of spiritual language, is an incredible blessing and a wonderful privilege that is given to those who have a holy hunger for fellowship with the Lord. It is a gift of divine grace imparted to those who desire a heavenly resource that is available in this present age. This is something that God has designed with you in mind. That's what Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost when he proclaimed in Acts chapter 2 verse 39, for the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off as many as the Lord our God shall call unto himself. This is your promise. God has reserved this gift for you who have surrendered your life to him. I want to well, I want to know how many of you've committed your life to Jesus? Anybody surrendered to Jesus today? Jesus says this promise is for you. Why don't you just tell your neighbor, he's preaching to you right now. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. Once we see the promise of spirit baptism and speaking in tongues, then I want to talk to you about the purpose of speaking in tongues. The reason I am so desirous that you experience this blessing is because there is a purpose and there are some incredible benefits to speaking in tongues. Now, I want you to understand that speaking in tongues is not the be-all and the end-all and it's not, you know, it's not a destination. It's a doorway. It's an entryway into a different life of the Spirit. It's not something we go for and say, oh, 
I got it. Now I don't have to worry about this anymore. No, no, no. It's just a beginning point. I also know that it's not even the most important point. Because the most important part of spirit-filled living is what Jesus said, you shall be filled with power and you shall be my witnesses. That's the most important part of the spirit-filled life is that it enables us, it, it, it establishes us, establishes in us a holy boldness that we didn't have before. You don't think that's true? Anybody ever looked at the life of the apostle Peter? You remember Peter before Pentecost? Old sandal in the mouth Peter? He was always picking sandal leather out of his teeth where he just kept shoving his foot in his mouth. This is the same guy that on the night Jesus was betrayed and taken, before he had boasted and said, everybody may forsake you, but I, I got your back, Jesus. Uh-uh. What happens? Three times in the courtyard, he says, I don't know the man. The last time, he reverts back to his old fisherman ways and starts cussing a blue streak. Is, is that what your Bible says? It's, it's, it's in the original language, a blue streak, right? There, you know. <laughs> No, not really. But he, with, with curses, he says, I don't know the man. He runs and hides. He's ashamed. He's embarrassed. Jesus restores him there on the beach. You remember that story? He tells him to feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Well, he goes back with these disciples to the upper room and waits. He's one of the guys that is filled with the Holy Spirit. And the next thing you know, Peter stands up and he becomes the spokesperson for everything that's going on. And when they want to mock and say, oh, they're just drunk, that's all that's going on. You know, they, that's what happens when people don't understand it. They try to either make fun of it or they try to explain it away. And so here they were mocking, they're drunk, and they were also trying to explain it away. Well, you know, that, I don't know. I, now, I, I don't, you know, I've. I've been in church all my life, and I, so I don't have a whole lot of bar experience. But I know a lot of people that do have a lot of bar experience. And I just got to tell you, I've never known of anybody going into the bar, getting drunk, and start speaking in tongues. I, I, it just doesn't happen. And Peter says, besides, they don't, they're not drunk because it's only 9 o'clock in the morning, and the bars aren't even open yet. And he begins to proclaim the truth of what's going on, that this is the Holy Spirit, the promise of God, the promise of Jesus. This is what Joel was prophesying. In the last days, I'll pour out of my spirit of all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Old men will see dreams, uh, 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 dream dreams. Young men will see visions upon my servants, my handmaidens. I'll pour out of my spirit in the last days, says the Lord. This is the entrance of the last days. So everybody wants to say, well, we're, we're getting ready for the last days. No, we've been in the last days for about 2,000 years. Did you, did you understand that? We've been in the last days for about 2,000 years. That's one of the reasons why when I see what all's going on, I can't help but think we're getting real close to the end of the last days because Jesus is coming again. And that's another sermon for another time that I don't have time to preach right now, but I feel like I want to go there, you know, because Jesus is coming again. Now, being filled with the Spirit, the, the, the most important part of that is not tongues, but tongues is an important part. And because we keep being dismissive of that and putting it in the optional column, I need to talk about that. And that's why I'm preaching this message today about why tongues is important. I don't want you to come here week after week after week after week and just say, well, you know, if I speak in tongues, it's okay. If I don't speak in tongues, it's all right. You know, God loves me. Yeah, God loves you. God loves you when you're messing up too. But, you know, he would rather that you accepted and received all the gifts that he has for you. I don't think I did that very well. Maybe if I say it to this side. He would rather... That you accept and receive all of the gifts that he has for you. See, I get better response over this on this side. I don't, I don't know. So, 
the reason I'm desirous that you experience this blessing is because there is a purpose and there are some incredible benefits to speaking in tongues. And first of all, I want you to see that this language of the Spirit has been given to us as a language of worship. When those 120 believers gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem in response to the command of the Lord, the Bible says in verse 14 of chapter 1 that they were continually devoting themselves to prayer. They were in a prayer meeting, a time of worship, when the Holy Spirit came with a sound like a ru mighty rushing wind and filled the house and baptized them with the accompanying manifestation of speaking in tongues. Filled with the Spirit, their, their, the room couldn't contain their exuberant worship, so they spilled out into the streets of Jerusalem. I think that was actually in, in fulfillment of what Jesus said. You will be filled and you will be my witnesses. They got filled and immediately ran out into the streets to tell some folks about it. The Bible tells us in verse 11 of chapter 2 that they were speaking the mighty deeds of God. They were glorifying God. They were proclaiming the greatness and the majesty of God. See, one of the hallmarks of the Spirit-filled life is joy. One of the greatest witnesses you can give to this world is a witness of joy. How many of you know this is a dark world? There's a lot of despair in this world. Everybody seems to be overwhelmed by problems. Everybody seems to be filled with anxiety. Ah, but when the Holy Spirit fills your life, He brings with Him joy. It's an exciting experience to be filled with the Spirit. It's an emotional experience. It's an experience that feels so good, it causes spontaneous praise to arise out of your heart. When the Holy Spirit brings this new joy, He also brings a new language by which to give expression to the worship of the heart. In fact, I have found that most of the people who are filled with the Holy Spirit are given this grace gift of spiritual language. They, they receive it while they are in the midst of giving praise and worship. The Holy Spirit seems to travel on wings of praise and worship. I remember a number of years ago in another church that I was serving as pastor. We had a lady that had been coming and she, had, she came out of, a, out of a Jehovah's Witness background. And she came out of a very legalistic time. and a, it, it, she, she was very oppressed. But she came, it was a miraculous way, I don't have time to tell you about how she came to our church. But she came and God gloriously saved her. And the weight began to lift off of her. And one day... Right in the middle of service, she was, she was sitting back, back kind of over in this area, right about where you're sitting, Kathy, somewhere right in that area. And we all stood to worship and stood up to sing. She was singing. She loved the music. She started singing and rejoicing and praising. And right in the middle of praising, she got terrified because she suddenly found herself singing words that she didn't understand and it scared her because she didn't know what was going on and so she it, she actually sat down and you know was kind of shaking her head a little bit somebody around her you know saw she was sitting and thought maybe something wrong was was going wrong with her and and, and bent down to talk to her. And she said, I don't know what was happening, but every time I try to sing and rejoice and worship the Lord, I just start singing different words and I don't understand them. And they said, that's all right, honey. That's just the Holy Spirit. You just go ahead and sing in the Spirit. And she stood up and began to sing. God just miraculously gave her a new language of worship while she was right there singing. I'm telling you, you don't have to wait for, to, for an invitation to come forward, have somebody lay hands on you for God to open up a fountain of a new language in your life. All you have to do is be open to the work of the Spirit and be lost in praise and worship and He'll give you a language of worship. It's through 
spiritual language that your worship is taken to the next level. It's through spiritual language that your worship rises unhindered to the ears of the Father. It's through spiritual language that your praise becomes a beautiful, joyful expression that proclaims the majesty, the, the magnificent majesty of the Almighty. No wonder John Wesley would write, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. The language of the Spirit is a language of worship. And then I want you to see that speaking in tongues has been given to us as a language of wonder. When those 120 believers spilled out of that upper room, the Bible tells us some of the many different nationalities that heard them speaking in their own language. It tells us that these people from different countries were amazed at the miracle they were witnessing. Verse 11 says that they heard them in their own tongues speaking of the mighty deeds of God. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, the Apostle Paul tells us, For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands, but in his spirit he speaks mysteries. Now, when the New Testament talks about mysteries, it isn't talking about something that is hidden and has to be uncovered by some unusual sleuthing of a detective like Sherlock Holmes or something like that. In fact, in the New Testament, this word mysteries means exactly the opposite. It means something may have been hidden long, long ago, but now it has been disclosed or opened, and I'm telling you about it. This word mystery is used after the secret was shown and revealed to everyone. Through the Spirit and spiritual language, we are able to speak forth those things that are now known. We are able to bring them into the light. We are able to establish them as truths that affect our lives. Truths about the life of Jesus. Truths about the Word of God. Truths about who we are in Christ. Truths about our connection with others. Truths about God's purpose in a particular situation. We may not always fully grasp those things with our natural understanding, but through the Spirit, we are able to proclaim the will and purpose of God about a matter in a language not known to us, but somehow known in a realm beyond our own. We declare the majestic, wonderful, amazing deeds and attributes of an awesome God. It's a language of worship. It's a language of wonder. Then I want you to see, third, that speaking in tongues has been given to us as a language of work. The apostle wrote in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Praying in tongues enables you to pray with a new depth, a new power, and a new confidence. When you pray in the language of the Spirit, then it causes you to cease being self-centered and causes you to be Spirit-centered. See, too often we pray amiss. Too often we pray selfishly. Or we pray with only a portion of the facts. And consequently, when we only pray with just this much of the facts, when this is the whole story, we find ourselves praying in opposition to the will of God about the situation. That's a sobering thought. I might be praying in opposition to what God wants to do here. But when you pray in the Spirit, using the language of the Spirit, then the Bible says the Spirit knows the mind of the Father. How does He know that? Because He Himself is God. And He gives the words to say that are in agreement with the will of the Father. He bypasses the constraints of human intellect and prays the heart of God. When you pray in the Spirit, you pray in confidence, knowing you are not hindering the plan and purpose of God with your prayers. Instead, you are praying exactly what God wants to accomplish. The Spirit intercedes 
through you with the language of the Spirit according to the will of God. Intercession in the Spirit transcends the natural understanding and goes to the realm of the supernatural. Intercession in the Spirit is travailing prayer. It's giving birth to new possibilities not dared to be imagined or considered or even possible with the natural mind. We speak in tongues as a language of worship, as a language of wonder, as a language of work. And then finally, I want you to see that speaking in tongues has been given to us as a language of warfare. That's why Jude, verse 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Spiritual language is a powerful resource that keeps you connected to the source of your spiritual strength. Spiritual language is a powerful resource that builds up your inner person. Anybody ever feel like you just need to be built up as a person? Anybody ever feel like you just need to be built up on the inside? Anybody ever feel like you just need to be encouraged and strengthened? You know, I, I, I love the verse in, in Psalms that talks about David encouraged himself in the Lord. Because sometimes nobody else will encourage you. That's true right there, Pastor. Boy, that's probably the best thing you've said all day. Sometimes that nobody got a word of encouragement for you. And so you just encourage yourself in the Lord. How do you do that? Well, that's... That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He builds you up. He affirms you. He affirms in the Spirit who you are and whose you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, sometimes I just need to be reminded whose I am. And I need to be reminded who I am. I'm not who everybody thinks I am. I'm not who my teachers told me I was or am. I'm not... I'm not any of those. I'm only who God says I am. But sometimes I forget that. And so the Spirit comes alongside to build me up. You know, we, we talk about building up somebody's self-esteem. I, I can't think of a better way to do it than praying in the Spirit. When you begin to pray in the language of the Spirit, it, it, does, it just does something to your inner person. It builds you up. It strengthens you. When you come out of that time of prayer, suddenly it just, it, all the dark clouds have lifted. Shafts of light have begun to pour through. And once again, you can walk out with a firm tread, knowing confidently that you are a child of God. In those places where your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak, Praying in the language of the Spirit strengthens and empowers you so that you are spirit-controlled instead of appetite-controlled. We could all use some of that. Not only that, but in those situations where you are faced with spiritual opposition, anybody ever felt like you just had a, a, a spiritual force coming against you and you didn't know what to do about that? Anybody besides me ever had that? Two, three, four, okay, a few of us, yeah. In those situations where you are faced with spiritual opposition, as you speak the language of the Spirit, you are able to push back forces of darkness and once again in the realm of the spirit establish God's kingdom rule and dominion as you speak the language of the spirit you are casting down imaginations and you are destroying strongholds while at the same time you're giving birth to spiritual realities being filled with the spirit and speaking in tongues is not for your enjoyment it is for your employment this is part of the enablement of power that God has designed to be utilized as a weapon against your spiritual enemy now I don't know why God has designed this particular gift for us. I don't even know how 
it accomplishes these things or why this gift seems to be more important for us to utilize than our normal native language. This is where we step over into the realm of faith and trust. This is where we step over into accepting the prophet's words in Isaiah 55 and 9 that God's ways are higher than our ways and His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. Speaking in tongues is not just an optional add-on to your spiritual growth. It is important. It is a vital part of what it means to be filled with the Spirit. And this is why I want you to experience the grace gift of speaking in tongues. I'm not interested in you having some kind of spiritual badge of honor that you can sport around and show everybody, hey, look at me. See how spiritual I am? Yeah, speak in tongues. I'm not interested in speaking in tongues as some kind of proof of the Spirit's presence in your life. But I'm intensely interested in you tapping into a resource of divine grace that is part of your spiritual birthright and is going to be a blessing in your life in the difficult days in which we live. That's why I want you to be baptized in the Spirit with the manifestation of speaking in tongues. Now, before we get out of here today, I want to ask you a question. I, I don't really need you to ask it, answer it out loud right now, but just think about it. I want you to imagine for just a moment that an anonymous, wealthy benefactor of this church decided to be incredibly generous and deposited a very large sum of money in our church bank account with the stipulation that this money be divided among the members of Restoration Church so that each member would be given one million dollars. It's trying to get your attention here. <laughs> if I told you that today and said that all you had to do to receive your million dollars was stand up and come forward, would you do it? Some of you are already getting out of your seats. I said, I said, imagine, okay? Unfortunately, it is an imaginary. What if I told you there was a provision made for you to have a personal assistant who would look after you 24-7 to give guidance to you, to protect you, and take care of all of your needs? All you had to do to receive the services of this personal assistant was to put your contact information on the back of the, or, or in, in, on the card in the back of the seat in front of you and turn that card into the information desk on your way out. Would you sign up? Listen. The Holy Spirit and this gift of spiritual language is of far more value than a million dollars. The Holy Spirit is the consummate personal assistant, far better than any earthly person could be. And this ability of speaking in tongues is so important and such an integral part of His work, I can't imagine any follower of Jesus not having it on the list of priorities for your life. So I want to pray with you. I want you to know on the front end of this, I'm getting ready to ask you some questions for a show of hands. And, and, and this is not an attempt to <clears throat> set you up for something. It's not a manipulation thing. You, I hope you know me better than that. I'm not, I'm not going to try to embarrass anybody with this. But I just want to kind of get a read on, on where we are. So first, I'd like to see the hands of you who have experienced this grace gift of the Holy Spirit. And you speak in tongues. Can I just see your hand? Thank you. Put it down. Now, I'd like to see the hands of those of you. You have spoken in tongues, but it's been a while since this gift has been manifested in your life. It's been a while since you've spoken in tongues. Okay? Thank you. And finally, I'd like to see the hands of any who have not spoken in tongues, but you desire to have this grace gift operating in your life. Can I see your hands? Yeah. Now, would, would you all please just stand with me?
Before we leave this place today, I want to lead you in a prayer. It's a prayer that just asks the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit and to release this gift in your life. Whether you've already experienced this gift or not, I'd like to ask everyone to just pray this after me, please. All over the room. I've borrowed this prayer from Jack Hayford because I felt it was such a wonderful expression and because I felt it was better than anything I could come up with on my own. So here's what I ask you to do. I want to ask you, if you would, please, to just lift your hands to the Lord. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you and praise you for your great love and faithfulness to me. My heart is filled with joy Whenever I think of the great gift of salvation you have so freely given to me. And I humbly glorify you, Lord Jesus, for you have forgiven me all my sin and brought me to the Father. <clears throat> now I come in obedience to your call. I want to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I do not come because I am worthy myself, but because you have invited me to come. Because you have washed me from my sins, I thank you that you've made me the vessel worthy. You've made me a worthy vessel to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. I want to be overflowed with your life, your love, and your power, Lord Jesus. I want to show forth your grace, your words, your goodness, and your gifts to everyone I can. So with simple childlike faith, I ask you, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. I open all of myself to you to receive all of yourself in me. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice in praise to you. I, I welcome your might and your miracles to be manifested in me for your glory and unto your praise. Now, here's what I want to ask you to do. I want you to begin just to praise Him in faith for answering that prayer that we've just prayed. And expect the Lord to fulfill your request and baptize you with the Holy Spirit and grant to you the gift of speaking in tongues. Worship Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to help you to do so. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your mind and to your heart to give you sounds and words to express your praise and worship to the Lord. And as those sounds come into your mind, don't question them, just confidently speak those words to Him by faith. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Thank you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. All over this house, begin to worship Him. Worship Him with your own language and worship Him in the language of the Spirit. Pray in, the, in your own native language and pray in the language of the Spirit. We bless you, Lord. Thanks be to God. We bless you, Lord. Vera patissa riamotoko sombrata la ravecataia, pura mariana la ravacassia, e ata sobroto robocosa. Lera parienda la mondoripi asturose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for, for manifesting yourself in our midst. Thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. 
Now look at me just a second. We're, we're, we're almost done here. I want to do one more thing because this is such an important thing in our lives. This is such an important day in the life of this church, I believe. You know, all, all week as I've been putting this message together, I've really kind of wrestled with the Lord over this message. Of course, I know that's a no-win situation, but I did it anyway, all right? Because, because and, and even last night as I, was, as I was falling asleep, and this morning when I woke up, one of the first thoughts was, this is such a lame message. I can't expect anybody to, to just embrace this and, 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 and break through just off of this message. And so I just said to the Lord one more time, I said, Lord, it's the best I got. So would you somehow break in on us today and do what I can't do? I can't do it for you. But I just believe that God's got a gift for you that He wants to give you and He'll bless you with it. He will pour out His Spirit on your life if you will ask Him to do that. And if you'll hunger and thirst for it, if you'll desire it, if you'll make it a priority for your life, He's got a gift for you. Yes, He does. So here's what I want to do one more time before we get out of here. If Could I just one more time see the hands of those that you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit and have this, you have this gift working in your life. You've, do, you've not had that happen. You've not spoken in tongues and you want that working in your life. Hold it up good and high just a second because here's what I want to do. I want to get somebody near you to come and pray with you. Lay hands on you and believe that as you pray for them, the Holy Spirit is going to manifest himself in the life of that person. Would you do that? Would you find somebody around you? Those of you that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and you have this gift operating, would you pray for those people around you? We got some people need to be prayed for. We got some people that need God's touch. All over this house, I want you to pray. Pray for one another. If you're still standing at your seat, pray that the Holy Spirit will manifest himself in the lives of these people. You pray in the Spirit. Believe God for it. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come with grace. Come with power. Oh Jesus, we need you to baptize us today. We need you to baptize us today. Fill your people. Satisfy hungry hearts, I pray. Oh Jesus. Spirit, thou art welcome. In Come, Holy Ghost. This Come, place. Holy Ghost. Holy Satisfy Spirit, hungry hearts, I pray. Thou art welcome. In this place. Jesus. 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 Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Release, Holy Spirit, release, I pray. Release your gift in your life. This place, how Tend, Father, of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Now look at me just a second, would you please? Let me just tell you something real quick about this. I know I'm over time. Thank you for your indulgence. The people will wait in the lobby. It'll be all right. Uh, let me tell you how this works functionally first of all the Holy Spirit is not going to talk for you you have to talk the Bible says they spoke so it's you speaking it's your it's you your speech apparatus your breath your vocal cords your tongue your mouth you speak 
But the Holy Spirit gives the utterance. And, and by the way, the Holy Spirit can't speak through you if you're not talking. I know, that's so simple. You guys are just like, yeah, uh, yeah, well, okay, hear me out. You have to do the talking, but the Holy Spirit gives the utterance. What does that mean? That means the Holy Spirit tells you what to say. How does He do that? Well, He gives you an impression. He speaks to your mind or He speaks to your spirit, your inner person. And you hear, you, you'll, you'll hear in your inner ear. How many of you know that you, you can hear things when nobody's talking? Yeah? You know? Every now and then I can still hear, if I get quiet, I can still hear the voice of my daddy. I know exactly what that sounded like. And I can tell you some of the things he would be telling me right now too, which I won't go into that because it's none of your business. But you can hear in your, own, in your own spirit what's going on in your own mind. The Holy Spirit will speak to your mind and to your heart, to your spirit. And he will give you a sound or a word. And you'll hear it. And it'll sound, it, you'll think you're making this up. You'll think it's strange. You'll think that's weird. Yeah, but it's because you don't understand it with your natural understanding. But the Spirit recognizes it. And when you are praising and worshiping, and you're, you pause for just a moment, and you, you have that, that sense of that sound or that, that impression of that word, that's what you ought to say. You just say it by faith. I don't know what this means. I'm going to say it anyway. And you can trust God. He says, fathers, if you are evil fathers and you still know how to give good things to your children that ask, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? I want to tell you, when you ask for the Holy Spirit, that's what you're going to get. You don't have to worry about the devil getting in the arrangements. You don't have to worry about it being some evil spirit. No, that's the Holy Spirit. And He's trying to speak through you. So you just go ahead and speak those words that the Spirit says in your spirit. And you just begin to lift it up. And as you do that, He'll give you more until it, be, it may start out like just a tiny drip coming from a faucet. But it won't be long before it'll be a river of living water flowing in your life. I want us to pray one more time. Come on, pray for those people one more time. You pray, ask the Lord, give me that, give me that gift. Give me that spiritual language you want me to have, Holy Spirit. Come on, pray. It, it may or may not sound like anybody else's. You don't worry about it. You just speak your praise and then speak what the Holy Spirit will say in your life. Pray all over this house. Holy Spirit, give us the breakthrough we need right now, I pray. Thank you, Lord. 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 We bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I got one more thing to tell you, and then we're going to quit and go home. The Bible says that initially, what did they do? They waited until and then suddenly see what happens is we wait until we get tired and then we quit we give up no you keep pressing in you keep persevering you keep asking you keep seeking you keep knocking God's got us suddenly with your name on it the Holy Spirit baptism in your life. My time is way past over. Thank you for being here. I'm going to be in trouble with the next crowd. I don't care. Let's make this confession together, shall we? Committed to the great commandment. Committed to the great commission. 
committed to the great community. Go. Receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause His face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May He lift His countenance upon you. May the peace of God be yours, my child. You are the blessed of the Lord. I love you. Go expecting 